Coffee Table Book Lovers and welcome back on our channel. Today we welcome Marcel von Osten. He is the only photographer in the world who has won the so-called Grand Slam of Nature Photography. Wildlife Photographer, International Photographer and Travel Photographer of the Year. His pictures can be seen in galleries, museums and used for advertising worldwide. He's also a regular contributor to National Geographic. Marcel, welcome. It's a pleasure. How are you doing? Thank you, Timo. Thank you for having me. And I'm doing very well. Marcel, how did you become a photographer? What is your story and why nature photography? Oh, um, so that started a long time ago. And basically, just like most people, um, I brought a camera along on my holidays and started taking photographs. Um, however, I was uh, at the time I was an art director in advertising. Okay. So I created advertising uh, campaigns. And being an art director, I was responsible for the visual part of, uh, of the ads. And I had to pick photographers uh, to photograph my campaigns. So I worked with a lot of different photographers and looked over their shoulders, etc., and learned a lot. And also started to appreciate the art of photography uh, along the way. And I started to become more critical about my own photographs, obviously. And then it became a very serious hobby. And then it became a hobby totally out of control. And then at some stage I had my own advertising agency and decided if I ever want to turn my hobby into my uh, profession, then I better not wait too long. And then I decided to become a photographer. And the reason I became a nature photographer is because I simply love being outdoors and I love animals and I love wildlife, wild landscapes, and I like to travel. All those things together make uh, my, my current profession uh, the perfect one for me. How long do you photograph? I've been photographing seriously since 2001, but I turned professional in 2007. You won the so-called Grand Slam of nature photography. How did this happen and when? Oh, so that didn't happen like all in one, in one year. Um, the thing with photography is that it's very hard to measure whether you're good or not. You know, if you're if you're an athlete and you run the 100 meter sprint, it's very easy. You know, if you if you, if you have a time above 11 seconds, you're not very good. And um, the, but with photography, because it's an art form, it's very difficult to measure your your own quality. And the only way to get an idea of how good you are is to enter your work into competitions. So that's what I started doing at the start of my career, just to figure out whether I was good enough. And I kept doing that also to just uh, uh, hope that publishers would see my work. And, um, and also for my CV, I figured it was good. And every now and then I would win an award. And eventually I won uh, a big one. So the overall title, uh, International Nature Photographer of the Year. And then a couple of years later, I won uh, the overall title in uh, Travel Photographer of the Year. And then the last one was Wildlife Photographer of the Year. And that's just an incredible honor because like Wildlife Photographer of the Year is like, I think it's like 50 or 60,000 entries oh that, my God. Uh, that, they, that they get. So to have your photograph picked as the best of 60,000 entries is pretty amazing. And uh, to have that happen a couple of times is, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, really good feeling. And um, but it's not, I have to add that it's not super important to me because I, because I think it's art. So what other people think, I don't think it's necessarily important. However, it is nice to know that other people uh, appreciate your work. Appreciate the work and that it's in your CV and it's something you can be proud of. Um, and I have seen your photography for, for many, many years. And I must say, I really respect your work. It's um, unbelievable 
wildlife scenarios that you are creating. Uh, but we Thank can you very that. much. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> what is uh, most challenging for you to photograph the wildlife? Oh, definitely the most challenging part is uh, if you photograph wildlife, you have little to no control over your subjects. So um, if you if you compare what I do to, for instance, uh, a fashion photographer or a nude photographer, then um, it's completely different because you can actually communicate with your subjects because they're people and uh, they're very likely to listen to your instructions. So you, you can, you can get, get the scene to look exactly how you want. As a wildlife photographer, the animals never listen to me. And uh, so whatever, whatever I want, whatever I want, um, there's a huge uh, a luck, luck factor involved. And I really have to study my subjects to understand their behavior, to be able to predict what they're going to do. And if they know, if I know what they're going to do, then I can anticipate on their actions and then I can try to, uh, to be fully prepared. Um, and that's, that's definitely the most difficult and also the most frustrating part of my work. I can imagine. You know that my favorite animal in the wildlife is the tiger. I, I really love tigers. I have certain pictures also in my house. Um, I have seen one picture of you running away from a tiger who is maybe attacking you. Well, it looks like that. Uh, is that happening often to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, not definitely not often, luckily. Um, so it's important to know that um, whatever I do, my objective is also always to not um, stress out the animals that I photograph. Yes. So I always want to be an observer. I want to be there in their environment, but I don't want to harass them. So um, luckily, knowing as much as I know about animal behavior, I'm usually very good at uh, picking up signals from animals like, uh, okay, I, this animal doesn't look very relaxed. So I better I either move away or uh, more distance. In this particular case with the uh, with the tiger, it was a very different story. Uh, what happened was um, I was at a place where a tiger was darted, so it was sedated, so uh, for a, a medical examination by a vet. And then I figured this would be a perfect moment for me to set up a remote-controlled camera close to the tiger with a wide-angle lens, so that if it woke up. I would be able to remotely take photographs with a wide angle lens. This is something that's difficult in normal situations. So I had set everything up and then went back to the vehicle. The vet had already given the antidote to the tiger. And then I realized that I made a crucial mistake with my setup. So I asked the, the vet, is there still time for me to walk back to the tiger and change my camera to a different position? And so the vet then um, poked the tiger with a little stick to see if there was any reaction and there was none. So he said, yeah, you're good to go. So I walked back to the tiger, picked up my camera. And the moment I walked in front of its head, the tiger woke up, looked at me and uh, growled and uh, jumped up and started chasing me. Unbelievable. And, uh, <laughs> and luckily for me, the tiger was still uh, like groggy, so it wasn't like in full power. So it only managed to take like two or three leaps and then it fell down again. But the, uh, yeah, the, the experience was the closest I've been to the end of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so that comes actually to my next question, or maybe that is already, but what was your most dangerous situation you were in in your career as a photographer? Absolutely, that one. Okay, because I, I was I, I was very close to being killed. Yeah. Marcel, you just released a new book called Mother Earth. Fantastic pictures, I must say. Is this your first photo book release? No, it's actually my second book. Uh, my first book I created in my first year as a photographer. This, uh, so Mother, because it's actually, so the title of the book is actually Mother. Yes. And uh, that is my, so it's my second book, but it's, uh, it's my first serious wildlife photography book. Okay. 
And how long did it take to finally release it? The project, how long was the project from the start until it's basically oh, in I, your hands? <clears throat> yeah, so it's it started at the end of uh, 2019. I was, uh, my wife and I decided to have a sabbatical of six months. And then one month into our sabbatical, I was contacted by a publisher who asked me if I wanted to make a photo book. Um, I had been asked this question for so many times and always said, no, I have no time. Why? And Why did this, you say no? Because I'm always too busy. We travel so much for our work and I know that making a photo book takes a lot of time, yes. time that I didn't have. So I always said no. And this time I figured, well, even though it's my sabbatical, I have time now. So I discussed this with my wife and I said, I, I better just do it now because if I don't do it now, I'll probably never do it. So I decided to do it and then quickly realized that uh, five months was way too short to create the kind of book that I wanted. And then luckily uh, the pandemic started. So I said, it's, it's, it's not luckily, luckily, because obviously it's horrible, but um, suddenly we had no tours anymore, which is the, the majority of our work is, is running the photographic tours. All the travel, international travel stopped um, at once. So we had no tours. So that meant that we had a lot of extra free time. And that was very beneficial for the book. And I just decided to, uh, to make the book uh, thicker, bigger, and more images, more pages. And it gave me a lot of time to actually also go through all my old work. Uh, and in the end, it took me uh, 14 months of nonstop working on the book. Can you tell us a bit about the content and what can we expect? So the content of the book is, uh, it started as an overview of my best work from the past 15 years, but I didn't want it to be a book just only showing beautiful images. I always also wanted to uh, use my voice to, um, to explain to people what situation our pl planet is currently in. And yes. our planet is facing so many threats from so many different angles, uh, it is really uh, in, in not a good place. And I decided to, uh, to write a lot of captions for every single image in the book, I wrote a caption. And sometimes these captions are uh, just telling what kind of animal you're looking at. Okay. But most of the time, I'm actually also telling people um, what the conservation status is of that particular animal. And usually, there is uh, there is actually a grim reality behind that beautiful photograph because that's the risk of creating a photo book like this that the beautiful the, the photographs are all beautiful and very balanced and um, very clean and graphic and so it tends to look almost like perfection but the earth is it's not in a perfect state at all yeah. And so what I want to do with Mother is I want to reconnect people with uh, uh, Mother Earth and I want to basically educate them by explaining what's actually going on um, in, um, in, uh, in nature. Beautiful quality, really nice pictures. Uh, I was amazed seeing your work. So congratulations for this book. Um, Marcel, what are your plans for the future and uh, where can I buy art from you? So I, I never have like very super long uh, long term plans. Uh, for now, we've decided to just continue with our photographic tours because both my wife and I very much still enjoy traveling around the world. We still enjoy being outside uh, in nature and uh, watching wildlife. So we'll probably just keep doing that for as long as we like. Uh, I think I will probably make another book in a couple of years because I must say I really liked the entire process and uh, also the end result. So it's kind of addictive to be able to produce something like that. 
I'll probably do that. And then in the very, very long run, uh, I have no idea. I keep all my options open. Is there any source where we can buy art from you, like prints, or is there any, yes. any partner that you're having currently? Uh, the easiest way would just to go to my website, which is uh, squiver.com, S-Q-U-I-V-E-R.com. I will place a link up here. And uh, that's my personal uh, website as well as my company website. And uh, you can find a lot of my images on there and also a way to order them. Uh, the most recent images I usually put on uh, social media, so on Instagram. Uh, you can also follow me there for uh, like field reports about while I'm traveling and while, when I'm shooting for a project, then that's usually where you can find uh, the latest updates. Cool. Thanks a lot. Let's play the book launch quickies. I will <laughs> ask 30 questions with two choices. Please answer in one word, okay? Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Beer or wine? Wine. Vegan or meat? Meat. Ice cream or cake? Ice cream. Climate change, human made? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Winter or summertime? Summertime. Asia or Australia? Asia. USA or Europe? USA. Jungle or desert? Desert. Mountain or beach? Mountains. Ocean or lake? Lake. Landscape or animal photography? Animals. Analog or digital photography? Digital. Digital. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Books or movies? Um, movies. TV or cinema? Uh, cinema. Photo art or paints in your house? Uh, photo. Steve McCary or Sebastião Salgado? Salgado. Peter Beard or Jimmy Nelson? Jimmy Nelson. Cats or dogs? Cats. Lion or tiger? Tiger. Elephants or rhino? Elephants. Birds or reptiles? Reptiles. Campfire or romantic dinner? Uh, campfire. Motorcycle or car? Car. Electric or petrol? Electric. Traveling or home? Traveling. Amsterdam or Rotterdam? <laughs> Rotterdam. Gouda or Edam? Um, Gouda. Countryside or city life? Countryside. Daytime or nighttime? Ooh, um, daytime. Last question. Mm -hmm. Wildlife or family life? <laughs> um, oh, depends on how you define family life. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that, I'll have to say family life. <laughs> okay. Marcel, thank you very much for your time. You're always welcome on our channel. Good luck with your book and all the best thank you for, for having you. me, Timo. Oh, you're very welcome. And all the best for you and your upcoming projects. Thanks a lot. Guys, thank you very much for watching this interview with Marcel van Osten. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, please put them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Take good care, guys, and see you soon. Bye-bye.